Well, let's just return now to our big uh, focus uh, this evening. We are looking at uh, the big effort at trying to monetize uh, infrastructure in this country. It's one of the flagship schemes of this government. We'll bring you an interview with um, the Niti Aayog Ayog CEO Amitav Kant in this just the next few minutes. But this has also resulted in a big political battle between the BJP and the Congress with Rahul Gandhi tweeting, National Mitri Karan Scheme, Roads, Rail, Airport, Power, Gas, Petroleum, Stadia, Go Downs. First he sold self-respect and now this. Now there's been a response from the Finance Minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. Let's take a look at how she responded. Does he understand what is monetization? Congress party can every now and then come up with, oh, you're selling off the country, selling. That's something which they are very good at. They sold air, they sold water, they sold land, they sold mines and made a lot of kickback with it. Well, let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the questions which uh, our viewers have been posing. This is on Ku. Uh, a viewer asked, no doubt, that national monetization pipeline is one of the biggest and boldest reforms in India. But can the NMP become a game changer for India? And that really is the question. Will it genuinely raise the funds? Six lakh crores is what they are looking at. So the national monetization pipeline, we also framed a question on Ku. Financing infrastructure development or is this India on sale? As the opposition has alleged, financing development, 90% of people who have responded uh, to this have said uh, it is in fact financing development and whether crucial Indian assets are being sold, 10% felt that that was the case. It's been described as one of the most ambitious efforts to try and raise funds for large-scale infrastructure development in the country, in a sense also to kick-start the economy, take it to the next level. Um, it's called the National Monetization Pipeline, and among those who have really spearheaded this effort, and the effort is to try and raise up to 6 lakh crore rupees in a finite period of time, uh, is the CEO of the Niti Aayog, Amitabh Kant, who joins us now. Thanks, Mr. Kant, uh, very much for being with us. Now, when will the 6 lakh crore actually come in as revenue to the government? So, Vishnu, this is a plan from uh, uh, for over a period of four years, from 22 to 25, and uh, mm, uh, there are annual scheduling of this uh, program. The objective is to enhance capex spending and building top-class uh, infrastructure, have a multiplier impact on growth and employment, and ensure that uh, the proceeds from monetizing existing assets get into new infrastructure creation and it should also lead to revival of credit flow yeah. but this is spread over four years and actually uh, when you do asset monetization uh, you are actually giving it on uh, ownership of asset remains with the government there's a mandatory handback it is a structured contractual partnership with key performance indicators and performance standard and normally brownfield de-risked assets are used in this. So assets have been identified across uh, the key central government ministries and public sector enterprises. And uh, this uh, four year period of 22-25 is coterminous with the balance of uh, the national infrastructure pipeline. And uh, uh, there are different models for monetization right. which have been used for this purpose. So that's what I wanted to ask you next about. Now, the indicative value of 88,000 crores this financial year and 1.6 up to 1.8 lakh crores for the next three years. Is this going to be cash in the bank for the government? Or how will you structure um, you know, what the government receives? Because that's the objective. Well, the pipeline of Government of India assets is about 6 lakh crore and it's about 14% of centre's outlay. Uh, under the National Infrastructure Pipeline. There are 12 line ministries and departments involved. There are 20 asset classes. When assets are given out by the public sector enterprises or NHAI or Power Grid or any other organization, for instance, the resources come to them and are used by them 
for creation of further infrastructure in that area. Right. Say, for instance, there's NTPC or NHPC or Gale or Power Grid. When they monetize their assets, instead of going to the government and getting resources for asset creation, these assets, these resources are used by them for creation of more and more and more and more infrastructure in the country. So this is a way of creating a cycle of more and more infrastructure creation. So for how many years will these assets be privatized? Um, does it depend case to case? What is the minimum number of years? Well, let me first say that it's not a case of privatization. It's a case of when asset monetization is done so anywhere. Asset monetization. It's not privatization then, because ownership resides with the government. Yeah. And this is a model which has been used by the national highway earlier in India. There's nothing new about it. Actually, uh, 1400 kilometers of national highways with a value of 17,000 crores has already been monetized by the National Highway Authority. Uh, the power transmission, if you look at it, the power grid has monetized five assets via power grid in WIT, raising 7,700 crores already. Right. Uh, so you have different models of uh, asset monetization. Uh, several of them, like which have already been used, are operate, maintain and transfer, toll operate transfer. Uh, you have another model in operation, maintenance and development and rehabilitate, operate, maintain, transfer. But in retail, recent times, uh, you know, uh, we, there are trust-based investment vehicles that pool capital from various investor classes. Yes. And which is called INWITS, Infrastructure Investment Trust, and REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. And therefore, you have models where people of India can invest in this, in INWITS and REITs. It's like a mutual fund and that can come in, money can come in for infrastructure creation. And when this resources are raised, the entities then put this into more of grid creation or more of pipeline creation or more of roads making. So the top three sectors by value actually are roads, railways and power sector. But again, how many but, years, Mr. Kant? I mean, I just wanted to try and understand. So that's a... I mean, is it a 99-year lease? Is this, you know, I mean, no. that's been a mantra in governance. Is it a 15-year lease in different areas? For yeah. example, power, how many years would it, would it be before so, the government takes back yeah. the asset? Yeah. So different asset class is structured by the transaction advisor differently depending on its commercial viability. The Maharashtra government, for instance, recently in February 2020 has uh, uh, monetized the Pune Mumbai Expressway. Yes. It has monetized it for 8,252 crores for a period of 10 years. Okay. So there are different assets of different, uh, it's the commercial viability of every project has to be structured by the transaction advisors. Some will go for 15 years, some will go for 20, some will go for 25, depending on the kind. You must, we must first of all realize that it has to be a win-win for the private sector also. Correct. It, the project will not, has to be commercially viable for everyone to invest in a project. And therefore, every project needs to be structured through a different model. And there are different, I named the different models because every model will have different, uh, you know, the transaction advisor works on this. Okay. Now, the report has said, and I quote, potential value assessed is only an indicative high level estimate yeah. Yeah. based on thumb rules. So yeah. what is the minimum level, the lowest threshold below which the government will not hand over any assets? Um, and I, I'll tell you why I'm asking you this. If you look at uh, Air India and the privatization effort over there, it's gone on for years and years. There was an effort which was made, a value was not arrived at, uh, and then, you know, the process continued. Now, you have set yourself a certain number of years within which you want things to work, but you would have a minimum level beyond which it's not viable for the government. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a concern of yours, that, you know, finding no, no, a partner you see, and achieving a target... Go by privatization and uh, is very different from uh, asset monetization and that is what i'm trying to clarify to you that these projects have to be structured they are put out into the market 
the normative value that we have arrived at is roughly 6 lakh crore it may be more or less depending on the bidding we we will carry out in every case a transparent competitive process it has to go through very transparent process in a manner where the government assets are given out for a certain period of time and there will be adequate number of we hope there will be adequate number of bidders and our estimate at this point of time is about 6 lakh crore so uh, here's another question now roads uh, obviously a, uh, you know a public uh, private partnership uh, the formation of more toll roads in the country will there be an active effort at capping prices because it has to make sense for the consumer as well when you do bidding under uh, asset monetization that you normally don't do bid uh, you don't cap or anything like that what you do is you structure it in a manner where there is more than adequate competition this is a game of good project structuring by the transaction advisor so that there is a competitive pressure the world is awash with liquidity right now because of the packages a lot of investors are keen we've uh, we've seen a very good response by international investors in the power grid yes we've seen some very good investments coming in the road side and we are very hopeful that there'll be a very good response and the competitive pressure for all these assets will actually get a very good response in terms of uh, revenue flows to the government no but in terms of the consumer the user uh, would yeah. there be a cap on what these companies can actually charge say you or me if you or me were, were to travel on a highway from delhi to a new highway on on somewhere the worry yeah. is that you know you've given it out for a period of time to a private player who can charge the world you can charge the no. earth no that's not feasible okay. what you are saying is uh, totally not feasible because as a part of the structuring the traffic the the tolls are fixed in advance that this will be the toll flow over the next period and this is how it will rise uh, linked to either cpi or wpi uh, nobody can do it arbitrarily it's a part of the structuring of the project okay now you know there have been a couple of uh, of reactions which have also come in for example jairam ramesh has said and i quote now comes monetization mela invaluable public assets created over decades given away to a chosen few this is legalized loot and organized plunder hmm. how would you respond to this well uh, you know uh, um, during his tenure the delhi airport and the mumbai airport were privatized was that organized loot and plunder i thought there should be consensus across the board as far as economic development and growth of the country is concerned infrastructure is key to the growth of the country if india has to have sustained growth over a three decade period india needs to develop its infrastructure raise resources government is good at constructing but it's not so good at operation and maintenance it needs to bring in efficiency there are a lot of underutilized assets which need to be used 24 into 7 uh, the railway bits were called out in 2008 when his government was in authority was that lo- loot and plunder so th- these are you know criticisms for the sake of criticism but country has to move ahead grow and advance and build infrastructure without top class quality infrastructure the country will not be able to progress and grow at high rates for a long period so the other point which was mentioned again i quote while giving the jumla of atmanirbhar they have made it the entire government dependent on billionaire friends again that only a few parties would get access to these projects how would you respond to that no i would only say that uh, everything will be done in a very transparent very very competitive manner and i can assure you that the best bidder and the will win and the country will win out of this process eventually uh, it will be a process ex- totally transparent and competitive and the country will come out a winner in this now the private sector has been holding back on investment now that was happening even before the pandemic uh, the prime minister in fact said that look uh, in the private sector in india you need to start taking risks you should not be so risk averse um is that something that that you know you are a little worried about that you, you this is the mindset people are risk averse um 
that you need to actually ensure that they they do invest in a finite period of time so this uh, proposal for a uh, Asset monetization was mentioned in the union budget in February. Soon thereafter, uh, we had done stakeholder consultation on the national webinar on the budget. We interacted uh, with all the leading bidders for assets like this, both national and international. We got a very good response. Subsequent to that, we've held several round of stakeholder deliberations. we've held a series of meetings with ministries and it's the ownership of the ministries on the basis of which we've arrived at the final monetization pipeline let me assure you that huge amount of stakeholder deliberations have been done both with the private sector and the concerned ministries and we expect very good structuring of these projects and we expect very good response to these projects when they are put out in a transparent manner so a final question to you you know we've spoken uh, at a very precise level of how you're going to try and get these funds if i just a common person watching this interview and asking how will my india change how will my roads change how will my railways change what am i going to see for example in highways in 5 years from now if you realize these funds what would your answer be what is the vision so my uh perspective is that the asset monetization program of the government would lead to creation of better quality infrastructure it will lead to increased resources being put in it will lead to increased asset base of the government it will lead to proceeds from monetizing existing assets leading to new infrastructure creation there will be recycling of the assets and this will lead to india becoming a top class infrastructure country and india will drive growth on the back of good quality infrastructure which is the need of the day and railways how will our railways change what what is it in the railways which is going to become better for the user whether it's transport freight or whether it is passengers what is what are we going to see in 5 years from the funds and the private public partnership so railway can be a very key driver of india's growth with enhanced capex spending it can lead to a huge multiplier impact on growth and employment in the country uh, many countries have grown on the back of railways uh, my personal view is that railway stations will can be a very major creator of uh, new economic activity mm-hmm. uh, railway trains better run will have a huge impact they can compete with government trains and therefore uh, railway is sitting on a lot of assets including a uh, vast number of railway stadiums which can be used round the clock for better sports activities you have uh, uh, the hill railways which are virtually uh, running to inefficient levels all of them can be made into top class tourism destinations railways has over 265 good sheds which can be improved enormously and to my mind the passenger train operations can be run far more efficiently and so can there be a huge improvement in creating world class railway station development last and this question. will give a huge fillet to india's econo- economy and growth last question the power sector that's another area um how will it be different for you and me in 5 years from now so uh in the case of power sector the key challenge to our mind is that you need more and more transmission lines you need better uh, you need this to spread it say for instance uh, linking up uh, solar energy in different parts of ladakh or rajasthan creating new transmission lines and therefore you need to link it Uh, you need to spread your transmission in a much bigger manner and therefore what we have envisaged is invit model for transmission assets have been considered we also feel that there are a number of hydel and solar assets 
which can be uh, used for asset monetization with these are with ntpc nhpc and nlc and it can they can lead to more and more of solar and battery uh, storage solutions for the country and that is what the country needs and these organizations can get into completely new area with the resources that they will raise they can get into new areas of growth like green hydrogen etc and our view is that this will really drive the power sector in india all right mr kath great speaking to you and thank you for sharing those ideas of of how it's really going to make a difference to us let's hope these funds are, are achieved the private sector does respond because this would be transformative if it all does take place thanks very much for being with us thank you thank you